Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the Darlington pair, uh, which is a combination of uh, BJT transistors, also referred to as a Darlington transistor. Um, so the Darlington pair or Darlington transistor basically consists of two cascaded transistors where the collectors are connected together and then the base of the first transistor is connected to the emitter of the second transistor. Something that looks like this. So I have a first transistor and the emitter is fed into the base of a second transistor. Two collectors connected together. And that's basically my Darlington pair. Um, so basically, if I call this Q1 and Q2, I will have uh, that two transistors with collectors connected. And emitter of Q1 drives the base of Q2. And uh, this configuration is particularly useful because as we are going to see, it achieves an effect called the beta multiplication. Effect beta multiplication, or basically we can consider this as a single transistor. Collector, emitter, base. And I'm going to represent the terminals here. This will be my uh, base of transistor one, collector, emitter of one. And this will be collector of two, base of two, emitter of two. Um, and in my overall configuration, this will be the base, collector, and emitter for the um, Darlington transistor. It's sometimes referred to as a um, super beta transistor because it achieves that beta multiplication effect. And the reason why I have drawn it as a single transistor is because, well, it's typically used, you know, um, understood as a single transistor with just a larger beta, uh, but also it is typically um, sold in a single package. So, um, you can, but you don't have to connect two VJT transistors, uh, one next to each other, but rather if you need a Darlington pair, you will typically be purchasing um, a Darlington pair as a single IC. And so an example uh, of a Darlington pair IC will be the 2N6426. All right, well, let's show that uh, beta multiplication effect. Um, we will have um, that the current flowing through the collector of Q2 or IC2 is going to be equal to uh, beta times the current flowing into the base of Q2, IB2. We can see from the picture that this is equal to uh, the current flowing out of the emitter of transistor 1, which will be approximately equal to um, the current flowing into the collector of transistor 1, which itself is beta times the current flowing into the base of transistor 1. So, we write that down, uh, we will have that IB2, or excuse me, IC2, is equal to beta times the current flowing into the base of transistor Q2, or IB2, we can express that current, and I'm going to, by the way, label the betas beta 1, beta 2. So this will be beta 2 times, and the current flowing into the base of transistor 2, we just said, is equal to the collector current from transistor 1. So IC1, which is in itself equal to beta 1 times IB1. So basically, we will have beta 2 times beta 1 times IB1. And by looking at the second picture, we can see that this, you know, 
IC for this transistor will be equal to IC2 from the previous picture and my base current into this transistor is equal to IB1. And so basically this tells me that for the overall configuration IC is equal to beta2 times beta1 times IB. And so uh, we can see that beta multiplication effect. We have um, um, expanded our current gain or amplified our current gain by a factor of beta. Uh, now, a, a little um, thing to note, there are a couple of design points or design notes that I want to mention. Um, and one is, you know, perhaps a disadvantage of the Darlington pair is that notice that you need to forward bias two PN junctions in order to turn on the whole uh, Darlington transistor. And so um, need to set VBE to approximately 1.4 volts to turn on the two PN junctions. And that VBE is referring to uh, the voltage across the overall configuration, VBE. A uh, second thing to note is that uh, beta is a parameter that is dependent on the quiescent collector current. If you look at the data sheet for a transistor um, and you look at the parameter beta, or sometimes you'll see it in the data sheet expressed in terms of the H parameters, HFE, um, you will see that it will give you different values for different uh, values of quiescent current. Now, Q1 and Q2 in this case cannot be assumed to have compatible quiescent currents because uh, the current flowing through Q2 is going to be beta times larger than the current flowing into the base of Q2, which is the current flowing through the collector of Q1. So we know that uh, current IC2 is going to be uh, beta 2 times larger than um, current IC1. So note that IC2 is much larger than IC1. I'm just writing now the uh, quiescent currents. Since IC2 is approximately equal to beta 2 times IC1. And therefore, cannot assume beta 1 equals to beta 2. And therefore, we don't really have, you know, the overall current as being equal to beta squared times uh, the base current. So that uh, reduces a little bit our current gain. Uh, ways that we can go about solving this is to provide a bias for um, the collector current in transistor 1. So, possible solution. Oh, I guess I mentioned there, since beta depends on IC. Uh, and a possible solution is to provide uh, a biasing circuit to increase the current through uh, Q1. Biasing network. And that could be done, for example, in the following fashion. I could have this is my Q2. Q1. And let's imagine I have a, uh, a common emitter type, or excuse me, common collector type of configuration, emitter follower, when I'm applying my input signal uh, into the base of Q1. Let's be in. And I'm taking my output out of the base of Q2. That being my VCC. Um, if I don't do anything to this circuit, let's have RE there. Um, what I will have is that uh, differential between the current flowing through Q1 and Q2, but I can force additional current through Q1 by applying 
some sort of biasing network. Uh, in this case, I'm representing it as a current source, but it could be something as simple as a resistor. Uh, you know, a resistor of the right value uh, will draw uh, a certain amount of current through that branch, which is going to be the ratio of the voltage at the emitter of Q1 divided by the resistance. For now, I'm just going to leave it in general. And so we will have that uh, my voltage gain for this circuit. Notice that the input signal is just going through two PN junctions, the base emitter uh, junction for transistor 1 and the base emitter junction for transistor 2. And so um, my input signal, basically, it's going to be uh, transfer from base to emitter with a shift in DC voltage of 0.7 volts through each junction. And so my overall gain or the output voltage over the input voltage will be equal to A1 times A2. And since uh, the voltage gain from base to emitter for one transistor is going to be approximately equal to 1, and so will be for the other transistor, this is approximately equal to 1. My input resistance though, uh, notice that it has increased by a factor of beta with respect to the single or the simple common uh, collector amplifier, because now I will have uh, my resistance looking into the base. of the first transistor, Q1, uh, is going to be equal to beta times whatever is connected to the emitter, which is, oops. Beta times little r e1 plus, and then let's assume that the um, output resistance for the current source is um, ideal, so it is infinity, uh, but otherwise you will need to consider the resistance through that branch. Um, and that's going to be in parallel with the resistance looking into the base of transistor 2, which will be beta times little r e2 uh, plus r e. If you don't want to make the assumptions that the betas are equal, you can label this one as beta 1 and that one as beta 2. That will be perfectly fine. Um, and we can then see that the overall resistance has been multiplied, the overall input resistance, by a factor of beta. Um, this is approximately equal to... And now I'm going to assume that in this case capital R-E is swamping little r-E2, and so this will be approximately equal to capital R-E. And then capital R-E multiplied times beta 2 I'm going to assume it's going to swamp little re1, and so this will be approximately equal to beta 2 times re, and therefore my overall input resistance will be beta 1 times beta 2 times re. Again, that's an approximation. Uh, same thing applies to my output resistance. I'll be calculating it by looking into the output terminal, in this case the emitter of Q2, and it's just going to be RE in parallel with, and then it will be little r e2 in series with 1 over beta 2 times whatever resistance is connected there. Again, I'm, I'm going to ignore the output resistance of current source IB, and so this is just going to be equal to um, little r e1 um, plus I suppose 1 over beta 1, whatever resistance is connected to the base, I'm just going to represent it generally with, let's imagine that's the equivalent resistance connected to the base, so 1 over beta 1 times Rb. Um, and that's it, you can see that the overall resistance um, looking back into the transistor gets greatly reduced, um, assuming a large uh, RB resistor, it's going to be divided by beta 1 um, and then divided by beta 2 um, before it gets added to RE2. And so we're going to assume a small output resistance. And that's it. That's uh, the input output resistance and game for a Darlington pair or Darlington transistor. Um, you may wonder what types of applications this transistor is going to be useful for. And the answer is any type of application where we need um, 
uh, high input resistance, low output resistance. So, for example, if you're using an emitter follower as an input stage or an output stage, you may use a Darlington pair in this kind of configuration to enhance your input resistance and output resistance, uh, but also applications that require high current gain. Uh, think about, for example, audio amplifiers um, where you need high current drive because you're trying to drive, um, let's say, a speaker with very low input resistance um, or in um, applications such as um, switches that are activated via touch or light sensors. Um, they typically will require a large current, uh, current drive, current gain. Uh, applications such as um, where you're trying to drive a motor and you're trying to provide a lot of current amplification, those will be the types of cases where you'll see the Arlington transistors um, used. Thank you.